Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and today we're going to talk about taking care of that neonatal calf when it hits the ground. It's bound to be a great show. My guest today is Dr. Dave Rethhorst, who is the Director of Outreach for the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State. Stay tuned. feedlot situation and we use uh, multi-men on a on arrival basis maybe if they came in a little lighter weight 550 600 pounds we use multi-men and high stress cattle high risk cattle look we're looking for a better response to our uh, vaccine for some of the cattle that we're looking for when we use multi-men um, they come in maybe they look a little uh, mineral deficient uh, they come from parts of the country that are lower in certain mineral so we use it on those cattle um, tends to make a big difference Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Dr. Dave, welcome to the show. Glad to be here again, Dan. Well, did a great job. You did such a good job on the OB, and you got that 65, 70-pound calf on the ground. We thought, well, why stop now? Let's just That's, keep right on rolling. So. Absolutely right. Let's <laughs> let's get him going off so he weans off about 600 pounds. There you go. So Junior has has uh, hit the ground, and you know what are some of the things right off the bat that that you know that you're assessing on on a baby calf? Well, I mean, obviously the first thing we want to look at is a little bigger breathing. You know, what do we need to do to, if he's not, if it's been a hard pull, uh, what do we need to do? Probably the oldest trick in the book is a piece of straw or a piece of broom straw and go up the nose and him tickle sneeze. him a little, get him, <laughs> get him to sneeze. Uh, you know, so once we get him breathing, uh, you know, particularly if it's one where we have the cow in the chute and got the calf pulled anyway, always get some colostrum out of that cow and, and get it down that calf. Right uh, now. Right now. Uh, don't, uh, don't rely on that calf getting up in two or three hours and nursing. If you got the cow there and you just got the calf out, get some colostrum in. Now when you're doing that, I mean, how much are you milking out of that, that cow and, and are you, you using an esophageal feeder? Then? I, I usually use an esophageal feeder and I like to get you know, at least a quart to a quart and a half. You know, some of these heifers you can't get that much out of, but but those that you can't get that much out of is usually pretty thick colostrum, so it's kind of high potency, yep. if you will, and it might only take two-thirds of a pint on some of these heifers to get what they need. Well, and that's, you know, when, when I've looked at colostrum studies and, and things, the lower amount that an animal milks, the higher the potency of the colostrum, of the and, some, colostrum yes. and so when you see some of these uh, range cows that have that teacup udder, and you're like, "Geez, they aren't getting much." It's it's probably the most potent colostrum that that they, we have. They might only need a half a teacup of that colostrum. Right, and so the calf doesn't have to consume as much because it's so much more, mo so much more po potent. Right. What about um, okay? Now now the the we've checked, make sure he's breathing, and, and we're going to milk the the. Calf, what are what's something that, that as far as checking mom out that that you're that you're looking at? Well, you know, you obviously you want to you want to check all four teats, make sure all four of them are open. If, if you're milking her out, don't just milk out of one. Make sure all four teats are open. Make sure you don't have any, you know, hemorrhage from a tear or something like that. Uterine uh, or vaginal. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, you know, and, and you aren't going to be able to tell right away whether they've cleaned or not. Some of them will clean while they're in the chute, but not very many of them. But, you know, let's uh, put some boluses in her and give her a little oxytocin and shrink that uterus up so we can go ahead and get that placenta out in pretty short order. Sounds like a winner. Well, we're going to take a break. Okay. Oh, the other thing you always check for is twins. Absolutely. <laughs> so, That's why you put the uterine boluses in, so you check for twins. <laughs> After the break, we're going to talk more with Dr. Dave about taking care of these neonatal calves when they hit the ground. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad that you joined us. 
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. You know, I think people are just kind of born with a passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without that horse. Oh, I'm not passionate about horses. That's just something that's in here. I, I can't explain it. Some people go to a job every day. I just go do what I love to do. That's all I know is horse. The bottom line, we're for the horse. It's whatever we can do to make life better for the horse, wherever they are, whatever they do. They're just magic, that's all. They just, they just, they got me. If we always do what's right for the horse, we will never go wrong. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Dave Rethorse. And we're talking today about taking care of that neonatal calf. And Dr. Dave, when we uh, departed, we had talked about, you know, mom's all right, calf's breathing, we're gonna milk that cow or heifer, get some colostrum, use this soft gel feeder and, and get it in the calf. Now, talk to me about the timing of colostrum. Because I, th I think that, you know, when I've looked at colostrum, there's probably nothing more important towards the health of that baby calf for its, maybe its life, than mm -hmm. what happens with getting colostrum in them. Why do we, why do we gotta get it in soon? Well, the, the gut on these calves has, if you will, holes in, in the surface of it where these, these large, the, the antibody molecules are real big and they need these holes in the surface of the gut so the antibody can be absorbed and and those holes start closing down in a matter of just a few hours so you want to get adequate colostrum in these calves in the first four hours yeah it's, it's just you know we used to say you got 24 but you no. go over 12 you, there's significant gut closure right and 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 you can tell a difference on, on these calves. You know, Dr. Louis Perino did a study years ago on, on weaning weight and, and carcass quality, and, and they could tell a difference on carcass quality on calves that didn't get adequate colostrum. Yep. You know, so it, it affects them their whole life. Yep. Well, 
let's talk a little bit about because one of the things that you know when we're talking about prevention of scours and things to that nature you know environmentally what what kind of things are we i know that a lot of these calves are born out on the the range but if we do bring them up and we are kind of trying to provide some sort of housing or whatever what are some of the mistakes that that can be made well you know just calving too many cows in, in too tight an area, you get contamination, you know, get feces on that udder and, and we'll get bacteria in that, in that calf's gut when he nurses. Uh, is one of the major causes of scours. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, the Sandhills calving system, uh, they leave the, the pairs that have already calved in the pasture where they've been calving and they move those pregnant cows to another pasture. Just to give so them a clean environment. Give them a clean environment. Break so, the cycle. So then the other thing is, is, is that, uh, you know, warmth and, and keep them dry. Right. And so, you know, we got about a minute here till, till we go to a break, but, but when we start to think about, about, I mean, very important, isn't it? Right. Right. We want, you know, we need some place that's dry, uh, you know, it's out of the wind. We don't need these cows laying down and calving in a mud hole. So if we can, you know, maybe even have to bed them. If you know, if there's snow or you know something, we might have to take some old corn stalks or old straw and put down on the ground so there's a, a dry place for those cows to calve at. Bedding, uh, taking your box blade out there. There's a million different things you can do to provide the comfort for these baby calves to keep them warm keep those cow's udders clean, and things that'll prevent scours. When we come back, we're gonna discuss more with Dr. Dave Breathhorse on keeping these calves healthy right after birth. You're watching Doc Talk, and we'll be back in a minute. Cow, calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. My name's Tim Todd, uh, along with my wife Chris. We own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Raggy, Montana. We give our cows a shot of multi-min pre-calving for the immune system of the unborn calf. She will transfer the minerals into the unborn calf through the blood system. When the calf is born, he has a, a high level of mineral in his liver, which will help with his immune system. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hi folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Dave Rethorst. And we are talking about hitting the, hitting the ground run with these baby calves. And, and we've got them, we've got colostrum in them, they're healthy, they're breathing, mom's okay. Now, some things we're gonna do to these calves early. And, and the first one is, is, is vaccinations. I just wanna to touch on briefly. And we always recommend that you all work with your local veterinarian. So not everything we say on here is, is specific for everybody's geography or everybody's cattle or whatever. Work with your veterinarian. But what are Absolutely. some of the things that you would do in, in some of the different endemic areas? Well, typically, most producers anymore, we have them given a, a seven-way clostridia or seven-way black leg at birth. It, it seems to help with some of those uh, abomasal ulcer, abomasal bloat type things. It's not a complete answer, but it will help with some of them. There's nothing more disheartening than having that 
biggest six week old calf you got finding him dead all bloated up because he has an abomasal ulcer. So if we can help that a little bit with, with a vaccine, that's great. Absolutely. And I get that question quite a bit. And then the other one that most people don't think about, but if you're going out there and you're tagging that calf and you're weighing that calf and you're vaccinating that calf, you know, the castration and disbudding deal. Let's get those testicles off of them as baby calves. Yep. Uh, it's, it's good from a, an animal welfare standpoint if we can uh, either knife cut them as baby calves or put one of the green donuts on. If you're going to use the donuts, just make sure both testicles are below the band. Yeah, it but, can't be much easier. No. Than, than if you wanted to use the, the little Cheerio, green Cheerio elastrator um, and, and band those calves off, just slip it over the top and be done. Absolutely, absolutely. The only thing that causes problems is mama's snorting in your pocket. But that has ways, happened. But ways to deal with that. Doing it as early as possible is important. I always tell, remember I tell students that the longer the testicles are attached to the calf, the more attached the calf is to the testicles. So <laughs> getting it done as early as possible, because it, as you've seen, has huge impact on, on the welfare of these animals. Oh, absolutely. You know, if, if we leave those testicles on those calves till they weigh 550 pounds and we start taking them off at weaning, we, we stress those calves and we all know that stress produces cortisone and cortisone crisis the immune system and then we have sick calves and they start dying from pneumonia because we started it all when we castrated. And there is a premium that we're seeing being paid at the auction market if you have take care of these calves and, and really the term that kind of gets to me is when we don't castrate them at the right age and they're coming through we don't call them opportunity cattle people are calling those mismanaged cattle. Right. That's and not something we want tagged we, on on the names. We, we don't need that. No. Well, um, we got 30 seconds to break. Anything on disbudding? Dis well, the easiest way to uh, disbud a calf is turn out a pole bull. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come back after the break. We'll talk okay. about disbudding. <laughs> Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Dave Rethorse on Neonatal Calf Care. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. I'm Katie Allen with K-State Research and Extension and got to visit with Dr. Jude Capper, who is a special guest lecturer here at Kansas State. Dr. Capper's research focuses on beef sustainability and the impact of the beef and dairy industries on the environment. The conventional beef industry has been sustainable and will continue to be because we know now far better how to treat our cattle, how to feed them, how to breed them, how to care for them every single day. So what that means is over the last 30 years or so, we use 12% less water per pound of beef, we use 33% less land per pound of beef, and the carbon footprint per pound has come down by 16%, which is a huge achievement on the behalf of the industry. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. 
Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Dave Rethorst. And we're talking about taking care of baby calves when they hit the ground right after birth. And it's been a great discussion. It's always good to have you here, Dr. Dave. And for us to be able to pick your brain and your experience and knowledge of, of this cow-calf industry and, and as we left you know we we talked about the best way to not have horns is get a pulled bull absolutely the second one is you know if we do have horns what let, let's talk about disbudding versus you know when that calf's just born because that's what the dairy industry very few people realize that 50 percent of our dairy cows are born with horns because right. you don't ever see a dairy cow with horns but they take care of them when they're little right and and the, the dairy industry for the most part is using dehorning paste and they're, they're clipping those uh, up a little bit, scraping the horn bud and putting that dehorning paste on there and, and really taking their, their time with it. A uh, little harder to do in the beef industry, but it can be done. Yep. You know, just, and I've seen some of the little butane right? disc butters that you can have in the glove box and, and uh, jump out and use that and burn that that tissue and, and folks what disbudding is compared to dehorning is when you get out and you feel the the horn buds and they're still moving they're just part of the skin they haven't right. attached to the skull yet and if we can get it done then that's the best time absolutely it's we aren't crunching any bone if you will to take those horns off uh, and just burn them a little tissue and we're done yeah it's done as a baby calf and it's behind them and I think that when we see some of the you know there's there's some groups out there that have put videos up of improper uh, disc budding or, or heat treatment of horns. You know, if, if you wait until any of that is attached to the skull, th that is not the proper technique to use. Right. And you need to cease and desist. We're only talking about doing it if you can still feel that, that, that horn move um, and it's just part of the, the skin tissue. Right. You know, and, and, and some producers will, you know, wait till spring branding time and, and, and that horn bud is a little thicker, but it's still not attached and they can still be burned effectively that, at, at that stage. That works, but if you... If you, if you, you don't want to go to weaning. No, sir. No, sir. So, in a nutshell, colostrum, colostrum, colostrum. That, that pretty well <laughs> takes care of it because we've got to have an immune calf so we can not only prevent the scours, but we can start thinking about preventing the respiratory disease that we can fight over the summer and going into winter. Any weaning. preferences on colostral supplements or replacements out there? I mean, it, 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 timing's probably more important than the product. Timing's more important than the product. Uh, I, I like the Lifeline product the best because it, it mixes easy uh, and it's a serum-based thing. Mm -hmm. Lots of good, lots of good products, and right, get to work. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. <laughs> and folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk today. Appreciate you being here, and I hope you learned a lot about taking care of those neonatal calves. I appreciate Dr. Dave Rethorst joining us today. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you'd like know, like to know more about what Dr. Dave and I do here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. You can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk, 
was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 